All right, good morning everybody. It's me, Spencer Lee, back with another video. And it is another one of these beautiful, crispy, clear sky days on Oahu. Beautiful backdrop. We have beautiful, clear skies over the mountains, beautiful, clear skies over the ocean. So it should give us some morning, some beautiful morning light. Uh, nothing that I haven't shot before though. Um, but I thought today would be the perfect day to test this piece of equipment here, the new DJI Air 3. This is my new drone, my new toy. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the drones. Now, when you're taking a picture with your camera, you're literally seeing that lighting event happen right in front of you, and you're using that camera to capture what your eyes are actually seeing. It's not quite the same with the drone because you're pretty much flying it somewhere far off into the distance. Like for example, today, we are gonna fly this thing over that island and capture the light facing this way. Now I'm still gonna be experiencing the light on the mountain, but I'm not gonna experience the light from the island. You know, I, I never wanna fall into the trap where I use the drone as a reason to not pull out the camera because I would rather experience whatever lighting event is happening at the time with my camera. Now there are those shots that are pretty much impossible to get with a camera unless you're flying in a helicopter and for most people flying in a helicopter to capture those scenes is not feasible. <laughs> it's not financially feasible or physically feasible or whatever. That's where I feel like the drone could be beneficial for us photographers to capture an image that we have in our minds that we may not necessarily be able to capture any other way. <clears throat> Another thing about the Air 3 that I really liked is this, the dual camera setup here, how we have the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens. Something that I missed from the Mavic 2 zoom was that telephoto lens. And adding that back here on this one really kind of sold me on this drone. What I really wanted to do today was get a telephoto shot of the island uh, up against the, the mountains. And in order to do that, I have to fly this thing super freaking far away, uh, further away than you normally would if you were just using a regular drone with the wide angle lens. So one of the issues that I had with the Mini 3 in the past was the connection. I would always come to this spot and I would have to literally stand right here as close as I can get to the island to make sure that I can actually have a solid uh, transmission signal from myself to the drone so that I wouldn't lose connection while I'm flying over the islands. If I were to, let's say, go behind this bush, stand behind the trees, or by all means that I used to shoot, um, or I still like to shoot kind of in this area where the marsh is to photograph the birds. If I was flying the drone from there, there would be no way that the Mini 3's connection would be stable enough to handle, I guess, the, you know, the connection between the drone and the remote controller. Now, DJI has supposedly updated the connection, their latest uh, connection to AccuSync 4 instead of AccuSync 3. So ideally, it should have a better connection with the drone. We're about to find that out right now. All right, here we go. Takeoff permitted, we're good. I think we're good. and this is with the wide angle lens so it's a pretty cool shot it's a shot that pretty much anyone who has a drone here on a walk who has at this point let me show you the difference between the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens once we actually get our image so as you can see we're pretty far away from the island and we're pretty far away from the mountains and this is just to get a super ultra wide shot um, of the island the mountain ranges and all that stuff now what I want to do is actually zoom in with this camera and I can zoom in with the digital zoom only so far <laughs> until the thing is like mushy already, right? 
Wow, <laughs> this is super tight. So I'm gonna have to push the drone even further out towards the ocean just to get all everything in the frame. So as you can see, we're just kind of flying out. There's the island and there is the massive mountain range there in the background. I think actually this shot might be pretty good and kind of taking several variations of this shot might be good. Even taking a panorama, I think might be the way to go. But once we kind of get out to maybe about this height, I think it's gonna be okay. If you can see the compression that this zoom lens creates, now this is a unique angle this is a unique shot and this is the type of stuff that's going to get me excited to fly my drone again so if we pan to the right you can see there's the mountain range if we pan to the left some more mountain range too but wow look at that that is a shot if i <laughs> if i don't say so myself look at this that's incredible I think that my interest in drone photography just got restarted because holy smokes, this, I, I am in love with this drone right now. Considering this drone is kind of like one of the bigger, it's not the mini pretty much, but it's pretty quiet for its size. And my catching skills are still on point after all this long, all this time. <laughs> six minutes till sunrise. I think it's probably gonna take us six minutes to actually fly out there. So we have all three batteries fully charged. So we're gonna see if we can get out there with, from this spot, like fly out about a mile and a half out to those islands, get around those islands, and then get even further that, than that to use the telephoto lens. We're, we're basically gonna see how far we can push this, this, this drone in terms of range. Let's get it. I wouldn't be surprised if this drone can make it to the islands of themselves. I'd be surprised if we were able to fly around the islands and capture a shot looking back towards the towards Oahu. Capturing that, that would be insane. So right now we are approaching the islands, getting a little bit closer to them. Right now I wanna kinda just take a wide angle shot here with the sunrise. Not only are we worried about, you know, distance, we're also worried about transmitting pretty much through the islands because we're gonna be flying the drone 
kind of away from the islands and past the island. So if our image signal cuts out, we might run into a little bit of issues here. So right now I'm just holding down on the controller, pushing backwards and image signal seems to be just fine, but we're just trying to get as far back as we can with the 70 millimeter lens so that we can get a nice tight shot of those koolaus in the background and then the islands in the foreground. But this compression that the 70 millimeter gives us is absolutely insane. Again, that's one of the main reasons why I bought the drone. But yeah, the fact that we're pushing it past the islands at this point, we're transmitting through the islands, we're super far away at this point because we're trying to get this telephoto shot and we're not having, we're having very, very little issues here. Now this is a shot, I tell you. Holy smokes, look at that. And the sun is about to pop out from behind the clouds and shine some light on the islands as well. So we have both light on the islands and we have light on our mountains. I haven't hiked in so long. So out of shape. Ugh. That was a lot harder than I expected. Anyways, good morning everybody. We are out here today to test the DJI Air 3's uh, resistance against wind. How well does it do in strong winds? Now, the winds are around. Uh, maybe you can hear them, maybe you can't. But they're around, but they're not super crazy. But our mission here today, we've got the classic Makapu lighthouse right below us, shining right there. We are actually gonna fly the drone that direction uh, and get a side profile shot of the lighthouse as well as the light painting Rabbit Island in the background. We're gonna try and use the telephoto lens if possible. But hopefully they'll give us some nice landscape shots and we'll see how well the drone does fighting against the wind that's uh, blowing this way. <laughs> the thing that I did notice though coming up is that the Air 3 definitely makes a difference in the bag when compares when it compares to like the Mini 3 or the Mini 4 that just came out, which makes sense. I mean, the Air 3 is more in line with the Mavic series. It's in terms of size and weight. Uh, it's much bigger. Uh, obviously, it has the bigger battery too to extend to that 45 minute battery life but it's definitely much heavier than the minis. And I kind of miss the size and weight of the minis. Come on, GPS. All right, buddy, get on out there.
obviously I wouldn't fly it during a hurricane or a tornado or something like that, but yeah, I don't think there's going to be an issue with uh, wind when it comes to this drone. This is not sketchy at all. Good morning, everybody. It's me, Spencer Lee, back with another video. We are out here on the rim of Coco Crater with Andrew and Clay back there. And check out the light that's happening right now. Holy smokes, that's crazy. Got a time lapse here going. But we're gonna try and get the drone up in the air soon so we can get some beautiful drone footage from on top of the ridge because that's really gonna kind of do this place justice. But I've got the Air 3. We're gonna see how well it does in high winds. The winds aren't too bad today, but they are definitely gusting. There's definitely some gusts that come here and there, but let's put the drone up in the air and see what we can get. Join the vlog. Join the vlog. All right, special guest. What's up, vlog? Andrew. So the Air 3 is right behind us. Seems to be handling wind just fine. There's a little bit of like shakiness when the big gust comes around at those, uh, you know, especially on those tighter ends. If you're using the telephoto lens, you're going to notice it a little bit more. Yeah. But handling wind like a champ, I haven't had any flyaway issues, any scares. <laughs> That's good. We are at, we're at 50%. We've been up in there for I don't know how long, like 15 minutes already. Oh, that's not bad. So battery life is doing good, handling the wind like a champ. Yeah. I would expect nothing less from these newer DJI drones. How, what's, what does retail go for the Air 3? Oh, I forget how much I paid. I try not to remember how much I paid for things, <laughs> but I think this is about... Is it, oh, it's like a, a, oh, like a thousand three hundred-ish, Oh, I that's not bad. Yeah, it's not I mean, bad. So Clay has a Mavic 3 Cine. You can see the size comparison here, the controller. And check out the Air 3. It's definitely more of a Mavic size, more than an Air size, I would say. It's definitely closer to that. Look, look, it's like you can put it on top of each other. And they're basically the same exact drone, almost, or same size at least. That's crazy. This is one of the great things about drone photography is you can literally just sit on the beach and take pictures, get your bangers from just sitting. <laughs> In terms of video specs, this drone is pretty much has the best video specs that any drone has on the market. Uh, it can shoot 4K, 24, 30, 60 frames per second, all the way up to 100 frames per second. And for a drone to be able to do that nowadays is pretty incredible. That's better uh, video quality than most digital cameras out there on the market. Now, uh, a lot of people will complain that this drone doesn't have a true vertical shooting mode where the camera actually flips over like how it does on the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro. And I see that as, you know, it is, it is of course a drawback and it is something that we should keep in mind when, when purchasing it. But a lot of times you don't really need 4K in that vertical orientation. When you're flipping your camera over to vertical orientation, you're most likely gonna be sharing it on social media. Um, not necessarily something that you need the utmost image quality for. When it comes 
comes to battery life, it's advertised that you get 46 minutes of flight time, but it's more around like the 30 to 35 minute flight time range. And that's if you don't want to risk losing your drone. Honestly, I get nightmares from this kind of stuff. It's not the horrific stuff that I see in my day job working as an ICU nurse, it's losing my drone. So I always just play it safe and once the battery hits the uh, 20%, I'm flying it back already. And I all usually land with maybe about like 10 to 15% battery left and it's usually pretty good. So I would try not to push the drone too much despite the fact that it actually can be pushed quite far. That improved flight time actually helps out a lot, especially when you're flying super far away when using that telephoto lens. Because like I said earlier, if we are using that telephoto lens, we have to be far away from our subject. So if we're up close, we have to fly far away. And that battery life certainly helps to make sure that we get those shots and get the drone home safe in time. is also equipped with all of DJI's intelligent flight modes including active subject tracking which I haven't tried but I probably should to kind of just add a little bit of uh, b-roll to the vlogs that I film. It also has an included night mode which uses artificial intelligence or some fancy algorithm to smartly reduce noise when shooting in nighttime scenes. I'm eager to try that out. If you guys are from Oahu, uh, you know for a fact that New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, there's a bunch of fireworks that go off. So I'm super excited to test this drone out when those fireworks go off. So in conclusion, this drone is probably my favorite drone that I've ever owned. Uh, the fact that it has that 48 megapixel telephoto camera and the features to support the use out of it, like better image transmission with that OcuSync and longer battery life, just make it a joy to use without actually compromising on any drone features like you would normally be used to. You can still shoot wide if you want to and you can still use it to get those big, grand, wide angle shots. But that telephoto lens and that high resolution of that lens is a game changer for drone photography. While I do miss the small and lightweight form factor of the mini series, I don't miss the heavy Mavic series. But the Air 3 strikes a nice balance of somewhere in the middle with that extra weight giving us some extra stability and flight and more reliability once we're in the air. And I think it's a pretty fair trade-off if you want something that you can push a little bit further and not have to worry about as much when you're actually in the air. If you're looking for the smallest and most lightweight compact solution, this uh, probably isn't for you. They're, the mini series is a better option for you. Uh, it's ridiculous how small those things are and the stability is actually not bad if you are just doing kind of short little pop-ups here and there. Uh, just grabbing a quick shot or two. If that's the type of drone footage you want to capture, the Air 3 is a little bit overkill for that. And this drone is also not for you if you're looking for the best of the best professional specs out there. Um, this thing doesn't have a variable aperture, so for video that means you're going to be breaking the 180 degree rule a lot of times, which isn't the worst thing in the world when it comes to a drone, but if you really need the best of the best video codecs and the variable apertures and all that good stuff, then look into the Mavic series or look into the, even the new Inspire series look pretty cool with all their interchangeable lenses. But yeah, this Air 3 is not gonna be for you if you're one of those super try-hard videographers that need a drone. <laughs> the Air 3 kind of sits somewhere in the middle, somebody who's looking to push their drone a little bit further than those standard pop-ups, but doesn't necessarily need the best of the best in terms of video specs. Photography wise, this is the best drone out there probably because it's the only drone that has that 70 millimeter lens that can shoot 48 megapixels. Yeah, it's just a nice happy medium between the Mini and the Mavic and can actually do a lot of what those two drones pretty much can, but just sacrificing of course a little bit of that video capabilities. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you, hopefully you guys learned something and uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys why I really love this drone and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see more of it in use going forward. <laughs>
All right, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, comment below, subscribe if you aren't ready. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.